don't let what someone else says about you affect too much. Like obviously if it's really nasty, yeah. there's a little bit of you that's going to care. Yeah, of course. But don't let it consume you. It's just a comment. And in like a week's time, you're probably not going to think about mm. it. Just don't sweat the small stuff. Welcome to the podcast, Lydia. Good Thanks to have you here. Me. Yeah. Why don't you quickly introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Lydia. I am a TikTok creator and also on Instagram. Awesome. Um, well, thanks for coming in. And uh, I'm glad that we got these fans on us because it's really hot this morning. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I want to jump fun. straight into this conversation. Um, as I said off camera, I want you to take me back to when you started this creator journey and like take us way back to that. When did it start? Was it TikTok that you first started on? Was it Instagram? And why did you start and what happened? Yeah. Um, it was Instagram. Okay. But TikTok has kind of been the main thing for me. Okay. Instagram was always kind of a thing. Everyone had an yep. Instagram account. Yep. Had an Instagram account probably since I was like 15, maybe. Yeah. Okay. Used to love going out with my friends and just taking a GoPro into the water or taking it jet skiing or cool. just taking the phones wherever we went. Typical teenager. Yep. Um, but then when I went to university, um, TikTok became a thing. Um, my friend Amelia and I. Mm. Used to make them to procrastinate studying. <laughs> yeah. And then at the end of that semester finished, it was Christmas holidays. She went back to her house. I went back to mine and I was like, I actually really enjoy this. Yeah. Did a lot of um, speech and drama through high okay. school. Yep. Was very good at it. I yeah. my own horn. <laughs> I love it. But I just loved it. Yeah, I yeah. loved just looking back and seeing this little video that I'd made, this little pocket of happiness. Yeah. And I used to post them. And then I'd get nervous, so I'd take them down. Oh, really? <laughs> and then one day, one of them came up on someone's For You page, and it was a friend of mine, and she said, you're actually really good at this. Yeah. They're, like, they're funny. And yeah. a lot of it was just lip syncing, yep. just knowing the words to whatever the video was. I never yep. really made my own content, yep. just whatever trend was going around. And then I kept making them. I would get so excited. Yeah. I'd go to my little summer job and then come home. Blue tack my phone to the window. Oh, I love that. In full light and just sit there and make them for hours. And then one day, one of them, I think it was beginning of 2019. Okay. Oh, real early. No, it would be end of 2019. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe beginning just of 2019. Just before the lockdown. Yeah, just yeah. before lockdown. Yeah. I made one, posted it. Woke up and it had like 2 million views and it was the most I'd ever got yeah, okay. on a video. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> mom, <laughs> dad, look. I love that. And they were like, cool. Like, <laughs> cool. Just don't yeah. understand it at yeah. all. Like, they always loved the videos. Yeah. but it was What do never. they do for a living? Um, my dad was the manager of a real estate branch. Okay, yeah. And mom has had many jobs. Yeah. Um, but she was the customer services rep okay, at a mall. Cool. So like the social media world was yeah, completely Yeah, not really them. for them. Yeah. They're okay, also cool. on the older side of okay. most parents. Yeah. Like I'm 23. Yeah. And they're like well into their 60s and 70s. Okay, cool. So yeah, for them it was just yeah, like, like cool, social media cool to them is, yeah. yeah. Like <laughs> mum loves TikTok. Yeah. I'll often sit there listening to her giggling yeah, over yeah, funny. random TikToks. Yeah. Um, but they never really understood it until it became a thing, until yeah. I got signed with the company that I was with. And yep. they were like, hey, we love what you're doing. Yeah. Do you want to get paid for it? And yeah. I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, when was that? I started working with them, I'm going to say maybe April 2020. Okay. Yeah, cool, cool. I was at university for yep. a year and a semester yep. and then COVID happened. Yep. And I left. Um, just didn't have the passion to continue doing okay. that online. Yeah. And that was kind of where TikTok became my main source of income for a while. Cool. Um, so working with the likes of Skittles and Little yeah. Lemon. Did How some big really was the channel at that point? I think like 40K. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, not really that big. No. But, but I was, had plans yeah. to, to grow it. But in the beginning, it was never my intention to hop on a social media platform no. and go, hey, I'm here. Yeah. Like, I want to do this. Yeah. Like I said, I would post videos and delete them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was like, Ooh. But yeah, then it just kind of became a thing. Yeah. It was how, cool. Can I ask how, what, like, what made that switch in your head to, from going, I, so obviously when your friends told you they're pretty good, but like, was it just that moment or like, was there a series of moments? Like, what was the thing that go, you know what? Fuck this. Like, let's go all in on this. Um, I think it was R&V. Okay. 2019. Yeah. I was in the campsite and... We were walking from my tent to the festival yep. and I had like five people stop me and go, 
are you Lydia McNeil? Oh, that's great. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my God. How do people know that? Yeah. And they're like, oh, I love your content. Like yeah. I watch you all the time. That's so good. And I was like, wow. So that's actually really cool because I look yeah. at people that I watch on TikTok and I'm like, wow, this yeah. person's so cool. Yeah. And I know how that makes me feel. So thinking about how it made that person feel. Yeah. I was like, this is sick. Yeah. I want to run with this. Cool. It was very cool. That's very cool. Okay, Probably so the most rewarding thing about it. For other people, the way I've seen them react yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I always find that real funny with like Mia, who I think you're talking to yeah. on the text, right? So she's only 17 and uh, her, her channel obviously built pretty fast in the last sort of seven or eight months, mm. but she'll see creators walk in. Like she'll probably talk to me later on like, oh my God, I got to see Lydia, like blah, blah, blah. She's already said it today. And she already said it today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like with Kennedy the other day and Ia, she was yeah. like, holy shit, that's Kennedy Anderson, like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, and what's real crazy is like, because her channel blew up, you know, like she's got, like if you take Kennedy as an example, she's got like three times the followers he mm. does, which it's not really about that at that stage anyway, yeah. but like, because his is longevity. But it's interesting to see that, like how excited she still is. But then she went away for the summer and she was in, what, did she tell you that story? The Mount? Was it the Mount? Was it the Mount? Yeah, she was in the Mount and like about a group of a hundred girls, like young, like 17 year old, 16 year girls, like came up and swamped yeah. her. She was like, it was my Bieber moment. Like yeah. everyone is like swamping her going, oh it's my God, so cool. that's me, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And just how excited she was. She was like, I don't know how to take it. Like it was real weird for her. Because I've seen her. Yeah. I've watched her a lot. Yeah. She's <laughs> so great. when I walked in before, I was like, oh my <laughs> I love that. That's so good. But I, I love that because like all I think we do we do the same thing. Like, you know, we all have all our people see us and whatever, but then you still meet people. Like and yeah. I think that's a cool thing about the TikTok creator world. Like you're just as excited to meet someone who's oh, yeah. a creator as, as they are to meet you. Yeah. Okay. So we are somewhere in twenty twenty. Mm-hmm. You're making money from TikTok. What was that like? Like as a uni student, like well, and I guess you stopped being a uni mm. student at that point. How was that income at that point? Like, was it? Um, I started really small. Yeah. But even just like the fact that I would sit down and make a video and it would take 20 minutes, yep. 25 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. And then this paycheck would come through. Yeah. It was pretty wild. Yeah. And it was never the drive behind it, but it definitely nah. was like that epic. Yeah. Like people are paying me to make content for something that they created. Yeah. This big brand. That yeah. was pretty cool. Um, and then I guess the more campaigns I did, the more traction I got with businesses and yep. the company that I work for had me on their website. Cool. And it's like when you get an email and they say they want to work with you, they're really keen to work with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like, sure. That's fantastic. I'd love that. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so you're in 2020. That started happening. What's next? What happened? How did the – you quit uni. What happened? Um, I kept making videos. Yeah. And then in August, after the lockdown finished, I went to makeup school. Okay. And I studied makeup for six months. Did a full-time diploma in that. Yep. Still kept making videos. Loved that. And then within the makeup school, I learned hairdressing. There was like a okay. two-week period in hairdressing. Yeah. And I vividly remember saying to my mum when I was like 14, leaving the hairdressers, I want to be a hairdresser. <laughs> she was like, do you? I was like, yeah. And I was always that kid that was yep. getting told off at school for yep. playing with everyone's hair. That's funny. Yep. yep. And so then beginning of 2021, I reached out to my now boss, okay. said, hey, do you need an apprentice? Yeah. And I've been hairdressing Ever since 2021. Nice. Qualify, hopefully, hopefully, <laughs> please. <laughs> August. This year? Yeah. Cool. Fingers yeah. crossed. How has that journey been like going into that apprenticeship and that, like how was it going in with that following and with that stuff? Like was, how did the rest of the people treat you? Like was there any things in there that happened um, or was it just pretty normal? No one, well none of my colleagues really knew anything. Okay. There's one girl who's the same age as me that yeah. knew. Yeah. Um, I so. did a photo shoot for, no I did an interview for... I can't remember the name now. Okay. It was on the cover of Viva magazine. Okay, cool. Um, and I remember asking my boss to have the day off to go and do it. Yeah. And she was like, interview for what? <laughs> oh, for a job? Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> no, like I'm being interviewed. And yeah. she was like, what for? Because it had just never come up yeah. in conversation. It's not really something that I go around and go, hey, I have a following on TikTok. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and so then she was so proud of me though when the yeah. article did come out. She had like a million copies all around I the love salon. That. And everyone would walk in and go, Is that you? And that was when that conversation kind of yep. amalgamated into me being able to tell people. Cool. Yeah, I have this following. But juggling hairdressing and doing social media. Yeah. Can be a little bit hard sometimes yeah. because obviously being a hairdresser, you stand and talk to people all day and sometimes the last thing you want to do when you go home is sit in front of a camera. So the TikTok side of things slowed down a little bit, Yeah, but I was still doing campaigns every now and then, Okay, which kind of like kept that side of my life going. Okay. Yeah. And so like, you talk about that uh, struggle of trying to do both. Mm. Did it um, like... Well, did it properly slow off and then have you been trying to get it going or what? Like, what was that like? Like, did you just, was in the back of your mind always like, I've got to keep it going or something like that? Or were you just, did you just let it go because you're focusing on the hairdressing? Um, or were you trying to juggle them properly? For a while, I was trying to juggle them properly. Yeah. Because I was at a really good point on social hmm. and I wasn't really full into the hairdressing thing just yet. Okay. It was like first year. So you're just. Yeah. You're an apprentice. Yep. You're just helping run the salon. You're not yep. really dealing with clients. Yeah. And then probably when I started dealing with clients and having more to do with the actual hairdressing side of things, yep. the TikTok slowed down and okay. I actually took a break for a while. Okay. Because I just couldn't juggle the both. Yeah. And then... How long was that? Um, I reckon I was not... Posting for probably like three months. Okay. Yeah. Well, not posting any campaign work. Yeah. Not doing actual work work through TikTok. I was still posting, you know, get ready with me. Yeah. Yeah. Little (laughs) TikTok changes and, (laughs) but nothing, nothing that I had to plan to do. It was just like, I've got a a free moment and I enjoy doing it. Yeah. 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 So you you did the stuff that started you doing in the first place. Yeah. Like having fun doing it rather than working for it. Yeah. yeah. And then, okay, so you, for about three months and then what, you started back doing it again? And are you, are yeah. you still just sort of juggling both now? Yeah. I yeah. My last lot of campaign work finished beginning of December. Yeah. Don't have anything in the pipeline just yet. Yeah. Um, but I think that's kind of nice just to ease into it. Yeah. Because I'm straight back into work already. Yeah. I'm like, I miss uni break. <laughs> yeah. Having months off. <laughs> Two have weeks the whole was summer off. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I am excited to see what 2024 brings. Yeah. What do you hope it brings? Um, my apprenticeship. Yeah, finish, right finish apprenticeship. your apprenticeship. Um, I'd be really keen to kind of bring the hairdressing side into my TikTok a bit more because that's more kind of authentic to yeah. what I'm doing now. Yeah. You're not doing much of that at all? On No. no. Yeah, because I was going to say I've scrolled through. There's not a lot of – Nothing to about hairdressing. No, nah, no. Nah. Why is that? No. Um, I don't really want people to know where I work. Okay, got it. Like that's yeah, yeah. kind of, yeah. yeah. It's my boss's salon. Yeah, yeah, okay. And that's not really her thing. Yeah, I'd love to one day, but at the moment, because I'm still the apprentice, I work for her. Yeah. I don't really have my own clientele base. Of course. One day I'd love to do that. Yeah. Like yeah. I want to own my own salon. Yeah. And hopefully by then I'll still have the platform to yeah. do something with that. Yeah. Kind of like what Kim Haberley does yep. and Sarah Jane. Yeah, yeah, cool. That Because I love, I'll just sit there, <laughs> scroll for hours watching yeah, those. Nice. Is that, you know, off camera you talked about wanting to speak around like online safety and stuff. Does that play yeah. into that same conversation Definitely. around why you don't want people? Yeah. yeah. And where did um, that come from? Has that been something that you've experienced? No. No. It blows my mind because I've never actually yeah. received hate. Okay, interesting, yeah. Well, no, nothing... That I'm like, Whoa. No serious stuff. Yeah. yeah. But sometimes I look at my friend's videos or I look at comments hmm. and it just makes me so angry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what drives people to be such a keyboard warrior and throw that up on the internet? Yeah, yeah. And like, we're all human. Sometimes you watch a video and you think, oh, that's going to get some hmm. traction in the comment section. Hmm. And you go and look at it and you're like, really? Hmm. Yeah. yeah. So just... Hopefully one day using my platform more yeah. to not have that really nasty critical side of it. Yeah. Because that's just what social media can be sometimes. But Yeah, it's a hard one. Eh? It's like a um it's the gift and the curse of social media. Like yeah. if you if you're the bigger you are, the more likely it happens. Mm. 
and um, like how do you deal with it and manage it? Mm. And I and I and I'm not sure if it is for everyone. Like I don't. So like my partner Claire and I, like she she can't handle the negativity. Mm. So you know we'll put something up on our attention seeker account or blow up, and there'll be you know like I play the um, I play the bad guy yeah. and now as a character for me and Joni. And so I'll often get like people like jumping on, thinking it's real, right? Like a <laughs> think our content's reality and so yeah. they'll jump on but she can't handle it and so yeah. and i just don't think she ever will like as long as we've been doing this now like she'll she just can't so she, she tries to just stay out of the commentary mm. and so i i find it that for a lot of people oh, not for a lot of people for a certain amount of people it's like just something you're never going to be able to do yeah and so you have to decide do i continue to grow huge or do i stay real niche so only the people who like it mm. like the type of content i have stay there which is kind of okay when you've got like a, like a maybe a channel like yours or um, like other people who like are real lined into like say makeup or you know something real niche, and that they can keep to that same audience, mm. and so they never get that stupid virality which brings all the hate. Yeah, there was a video going around. Oh, there is a series going around at the moment about people eating snow. Have you seen this? No. Nope. Have any of you guys seen this one? The snow one. So, um, and obviously in the US, it's like. In, in, in the north of the US and Canada, it's snowing crazy at the moment, yeah. right? And so people are like like a dad and like all these other people. Reese Witherspoon was one of them, like showing how what they do when they eat snow. They'll like big snowfall come down, they'll go grab some of this fresh snow off yeah. like, something outside and then they'll like put it into a bowl and they'll put like condensed cream, uh, milk in it, whatever. They'll make these things, right? Yeah. And that just makes ice cream. Yeah. That's all it is. Snow's just ice, right? And then there's just all this like hate in the comments, like, calling them like because his dad was like giving it to his kids like that's bad for your kids like all the pollutants and it's bad to eat snow and all sort of crap which like technically there's a bunch of science people come out like no like it's 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 gross if you grab it from the ground yeah but if it's like the snow's like yeah. this deep like this top stuff like literally just fell out of the sky so anyway there's this whole like um hate section in it and reese witherspoon's the same like she's just been getting attacked for making like, making snow cone stuff but it's this, uh, like, it brought up the conversation with Claire and I around, like, how do you deal with that mm. sort of stuff? And from her end, the fact of having to ask the question was the thing. Like, I would never have thought to ask the question, how do I deal with all the hate? Yeah. I would have just been like, oh, this got so much engagement. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's how we look at it. Like, Jenny yeah. and I will be like, like, we, go, we were talking about, we got a client recently who got their first hate comment on a video we made. Yeah. And we were all excited. We're like, finally, like we cracked it. Like we, we flipped it to get traction. Traction. Like this yeah. is broadly accepted now. Mm. And they were like, you bring brought our brand into disrepair. Like, mm. you know, and I was like, that's, that's, that's not how not this how works. That's not how we look at it. That's not how we look at it. So it's a real interesting conversation you have there. Because I'm not saying that people shouldn't hate online. I think no. they're just, I don't know, people have bad days and. Some of them are just trolling. Like you go ask Alicia who works for us. She just does it to troll people. Mm. I actually went, she's not real. I wouldn't say she's hateful, yeah. but she just does stuff to poke, like play into the world. Yeah. So, okay. So if you think that like that, from your perspective, how do, um, how do you then build this, I guess, world that you want to live in where you like, you stand on the fence or you play, you keep this positivity. Like what, what do you want to do to make sure you can stop that when you know it's there anyway? Just keep it authentic. Keep you authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we all know that hate's there. We yeah. all know that trolls are there. We all know that keyword warriors are there. Mm -hmm. Just probably focusing more on the side of people that it does affect. Yeah. And it does hurt. Yeah. Letting them know that they're not the only ones. Cool. And that these comments are literally just people sitting there behind their screens. Cool. Like if you saw them in public, they probably wouldn't say that to your face. No. Nah. Like people <laughs> love a good roast. Yeah, yeah. Like I see videos sometimes and I'm like, oh, that's something's going to be said. Yeah. And you go and read through them and you're like, that person is just sitting there typing away on their phone going, I'm just going to make this person yeah. feel crap. Yeah. Because it's going to make me feel better. Because it's going to make me feel better. Well, that's what better. they think. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you do that? Like, because I think it's a real issue in that a lot of young creators – uh, don't know how to deal with that one just once it cracks yeah like how do you how do you help them like how what is that message like 
how do you what would you tell someone like let's say it was Mia and it won't be Mia because Mia does not give a fuck and in fact <laughs> the thing that people think she is in her comments we've made her turn that into a character for the attention seekers channel yeah but if it was someone like Mia who's younger looks up to you comes to you is like how do you deal with this like what do you tell them water on a duck's back you yeah. don't know the person you should only give a shit about what the people around you think what people you, that you care about, the people that you put effort into. How do you do that tactically, though? Like, you know, like that's – I say that. And the reason I'm asking this is because like, I say that to plenty of people. I say it to my partner, Claire. Yeah. Like, who cares a fuck? Like, yeah. But tactically, like how do you help people see that? Like how do they – how do people who are affected by it start to go, what can you say to them? What can you do that makes them – make it click for them? Do they bring any value to your life? Do you know who they are? Do, would you turn around and say that to them? No, because you don't know them. You don't have an opinion on them. They don't really have an opinion on you. They've just used an empty thought in their brain to post mm. something about you when they don't know you at all. So it's kind of just this bubble of who cares? Like yeah. they don't, they're not in your life. Yeah. Don't let what someone else says about you affect too much like obviously if it's really nasty yeah. there's a little bit of you that's going to care yeah of course but don't let it consume you yeah it's just a comment and in, in like a week's time you're probably not going to think about mm. it mm. just don't sweat the small stuff yeah which can be harder said than done and it definitely took me a little while yeah i remember when i first started gaining traction on tiktok yeah I used to walk around because I did two years in the halls. Yeah. I used to walk around the halls and people would go like this. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even do the renegade. What is this? <laughs> that is so good. Just like little things. Yeah. Or they'd be like, TikTok girl, TikTok girl. Yeah. Or they'd like walk past me and go, oh my God, are you Lydia McNeil? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I am. Yeah. yeah. So? Yeah. Like, Pull out a pen. You want an autograph? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I guess little comments mm. and little things like that have just never really bothered me. Yeah. What do you do about like, like what would you do? So you get these nasty comments or people are getting them. Do they, how do you handle them? Do you ignore them? Do you hide them, delete them? Like what, how do you deal with the, the nasty ones? Block people? I don't really get them. No, nah, you just don't get them. No. Nah. What really. would you say to people who do? Just delete it. Just delete it. Because other people don't need to see that. No. I don't want to see it. It's not worth it. I think uh, maybe I've had a few in the past. Yeah. But nothing that like stands out to me that I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just don't see it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hard one, right? Because I'm, like for me, I love it because I, like I just said, like I like I like the hate coming in. I think it's, <laughs> for me, it's all people engagement. Arguing? Yeah, it's funny. I've had people argue with each other uh, yeah. in the comments and I'm yeah. like, keep commenting. Yeah, keep commenting, keep going. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. My engagement is through like, the roof. I'm like, this is benefiting me. <laughs> you yeah. can do what you want. Um, but also, I don't think I've ever really posted enough that would warrant yeah. hate comments. Yeah. Like, I don't really post my opinion. I don't think I've ever no. posted my opinion. No. And I don't often do I never used to do a lot of talking videos yeah, like okay. about my life and I don't know things that I think generate hate not that I've intentionally avoided I just haven't really done yeah like a lot of it in the beginning was just lip syncing yeah and then a couple of dancers because I used to be a dancer and yeah. vlogs yeah um get ready with me's because I love my makeup yeah transitions I don't know. It's not really the stuff of like people can latch on to some sort of opinion yeah. and have a go at you a bit against it, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. I, as like August, hopefully, fingers crossed, you're fully qualified. What's the plan? Like, so both both from a career perspective, so what are you hoping to do like now that you're fully qualified? And then two, like where do you think this creative journey goes? Hmm. Getting the qualification, I need to build the clientele. Mm -hmm. So jumping on Instagram and saying, 
hey, I am fully qualified if anyone's mm-hmm. looking to get their hair done, mm-hmm. come to me. Seeing what that does. Yeah. Because I have, I have like a clientele base. Mm. Probably not enough at the moment, but I mean, that's just what it is being an apprentice. Yeah. Um, I don't know if my boss is going to watch this podcast. <laughs> I don't know. You don't have to say stuff about like leaving and anything like that, but like you, you're hoping that the the goal for you is become fully qualified, build your own client base. Yeah. That's pretty normal for any hairdresser, yeah. though, right? Definitely own my own salon one day. Yeah. Definitely. Like yeah. that is always been the dream all along yeah own my own salon yeah have staff just make it a lot more than what I'm doing now yeah in terms of taking more time with clients and you know instead of doing eight clients a day or ten Mm. clients a day doing three Mm. and doing a full transformation or just doing something that I really enjoy Instead of some things. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's one of those things is like businesses grow the the maintenance hairdressing. Yeah. Instead of doing stuff. maintenance side of things. And the maintenance stuff is what pays the bills long term, right? Like that's yeah. the hard thing. It's yeah. like that's that's why the big hairdressers will have staff yeah. to like, okay, you take the maintenance, I get to do the fun stuff. Yeah. Um when you think about that, like owning your own salon thing, because that's like a big deal, like owning a salon, that's not like a something people should just jump into because no. it's huge. That's um the, like when I went into my career was in hotels. Mm-hmm. And so when people know there's a skill thing that they want to go through, I always say that my advice to them, whether or not you've got a huge audience or not, is get someone else to teach you that by getting paid to do it. Yeah. And so you'd, you'd become a qualified hairdresser but then it's going well how do i learn the business side of Mm. it by getting paid to do it yeah well like how from your perspective are you someone who's like quite do you just want to jump straight into that or is it something you're just happy to work along and push through and learn that through someone else or are you someone who's like real entrepreneurial who just said nah fuck i'll figure it out on the way um i definitely look up to my boss a lot. I watch what she does and I give her a lot of credit for what she does. Yeah. But also just like making little notes about what yeah. she does. Yeah. Because she's a bloody good businesswoman. Yeah. She's been in the industry for a really long time. Cool. She owns the salon. She owns the business. Cool. She has been top in the industry. Nice. She's won competitions. Nice. She's trained countless amount of apprentices, including myself. Yeah. So just like watching the way that she – works yeah because her business and her career has been so successful yeah taking little leaves yeah but also i feel like i am quite entrepreneurial yep um i know that i definitely want to own a business one day yeah and i always have done just probably finding the knowledge that i need and learning the knowledge that i need to own a business yeah it's obviously not just hey, I own a business. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pay tax. You know, just start which it. I hate. Yeah, hate tax. <laughs> you know, and even that, like, that's like something. Um, even the tax conversation is a real good one to have when you're young. Oh. No, because like, when I was young, I was the same thing. Like, oh, fucking tax, taking all my money. But now, when I think of my tax bills and how big they've gotten, yeah, I think how much other money there yeah. is, and like now it's switched in my head, like. Mm. We had to, in January, pay a $61,000 GST bill, which was my, and I was like, oh, fuck, that hurts. Like, pay yeah. 61 grand in one go. But then, and I was saying that, and then, like, straight away my brain went to, fuck, do you know how much that's on? Mm-hmm. You know? Because actually, like, with GST, the 61K is only a portion of the GST you've collected. Yeah. Because obviously you have expenses and there's whatever. I'm not going to get into accounting here, but. Once your mind flips that, like, actually, this is fucking great, mm. paying tax, especially GST and payroll tax. Yeah. Those two things, when you're paying those, it means um, you are something. You're killing it. Yeah. Yeah. There's this um, funny thing where you get a lot of entrepreneurs, like, in the early stage of their um, business going, oh, I got a credit for my GST. Mm. And, like, they get a rebate and they think it's cool because they get money back. And it's like, no, that means you spent more than you earned. Yeah. 
that means you're, you're you're making a loss like you're you're losing you're, you're losing, losing the game like this is not <laughs> a good losing thing battle here. yeah you keep doing that and you'll yeah. be out of business real fast so it is an interesting conversation because i what i don't like paying is income tax yeah uh not income tax for my i get like so i pay myself a salary and that's mm. fine but like for the business yeah. business income so we try to run it real like right to the wire every year so there's like no profit left in the business yeah because we pay enough tax and bloody gst and everything mm. else but there is a um there is an interesting thing about like how do you turn that relationship around like because you're paying tax obviously on all your TikToks. TikTok stuff yeah yeah how do you how did you manage that we did you set that up from the beginning did you have like were your parents help and like how did you know to do that or did you just get hit with a big bill um <laughs> my first year I just got hit with a big bill oh, and learned my lesson yeah. real hard and fast um that was awful yeah hated that but yeah. obviously well not obviously the money that I earn from TikTok is coming from Australia yeah so you get the offshore margin kind of thing and then also they don't pay the PAYE yeah they don't pay that little portion of tax. So every time you get an invoice, putting just working out and putting that aside, yeah, which is really annoying. Yeah, are you just doing that manually now? Um, or are you on Henry or something? I actually heard about Henry yeah. recently because the most recent one was quite large. Yeah, and I was like, oh. Oh, you should definitely look it. Up. I mean, he sat yeah. in that chair not long ago, right? I've um, got it on my phone. Yeah, you should definitely I just, use it. I just downloaded it I think the other Joni day. Uses it still. Does she still use it, eh? I think she does, yeah. She uses yeah. it all for personal finance. Because it just gives you the money you're allowed. Yeah. 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 But for a while there, because TikTok slowed down so much and I wasn't really earning yeah. a sustainable income to be able to do it. Yeah. A little bit frivolous. Yeah. yeah, yeah. With the spending side of things. <laughs> but my mum's really good at it. Okay. Shout out, mum. It's, um, it's a thing that lots me. of... Um, young creators get fall into trouble. Yeah. They just get all this money and they're like, oh, this is amazing. This is great. And then because they put it all publicly, IAD know to come after them. Yeah. <laughs> because it's all live. Yeah. Yeah. And they've got the evidence right yeah. there to be like, I know you did yeah. this. I yeah. know these are things and I can ask those companies for invoice yeah. trail. Um, so now you've just been doing it manually. Pretty much, yeah. How have you been doing just it? Just paid it yesterday. It <laughs> so annoying. Have you just been going... I do the calculations every whatever timeline yeah. and then you pay it rather than like slowly building up to it. Yeah. So yeah. my accounts, the money that it goes into, yeah. take away what it is going to be and just put it aside. Okay. And then yeah. transfer it to my mom so I don't touch okay, it. Okay, cool. So you are taking it out as the money comes I have in. to take it out. Good. Otherwise, Big yeah. bills come in. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's smart. And that's what Henry does for you. Yeah. He takes it out for you. Yeah, it's a smart thing. You talk, I talk to heaps of people who do this at the beginning and then they're like um, – you know, I mean, it might not be huge, but relative to the amount of money they're earning from the platform, yeah, it's massive. Yeah, even like our international staff, because the way we pay them, are like kind of like contractors. Yeah, and one of our particular staff, which I won't tell who it is, I've been telling them for a while now. Like, have you been paying your tax? Like, because I don't pay your tax. Yeah, like I can't pay your tax. I'm not registered with the, your government. Yeah, and he hadn't for a while. And I was like, you need to start doing this because it's like a few thousand dollars like you're going to owe them by the end of this thing. And I can't help you. Yeah. I can't help you. So you got to start putting this money away. Um, and we just hired a couple staff in New York and same thing to them. I'm like, you guys are contractors. Like, and you, you have get, to do this. You have to put away. And you're, this is the US. Like your taxes are huge and you've got to pay state tax and you've got to pay uh, yeah. federal tax and all this sort of shit. So uh, it's an interesting one. It is a, it is one of those things. Like it's it's annoying income tax, but if you are consistently paying it, then you're doing something right. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I get my paycheck through hairdressing Yeah. and I see how much I've worked and I see how much tax and I'm like, at least I'm earning enough and doing what I love. So that's okay. Yeah. I don't mind that. Nah. It's just when it's like the end of the financial year yeah. and you get this whopping bill yeah. and you're like, oh, damn, but that's okay. How old are you now? 23. 23. Um, 24 in July. In July. So I, um, yeah, I find a real, the thing I find real crazy is like, like, I don't know what you get paid and we don't have to get into that, but the guy, like I know obviously know what my team are paid and a lot of them are around the same age as you mm. and and even if they once complained about tax, I'm like, fuck, like your uh, wage that you're getting paid, like hourly rate roughly, is like three times what I was on at the same yeah. time. 
like the waiters <laughs> like, <laughs> like my cousin david over there him and i used to work together and we used to be on like like even when in australia where we work where they've got the highest average wages in the world yeah. we're still on less than my first hourly wage there was still less than half of connor's now mm. and i was his age but i was managing a department like i like i was like yeah managing a, a whole banquets department of a hotel and so if they like for me it's like shut the fuck up <laughs> like right now like yeah cost of living and stuff's gone up but actually what I found is that there's like a when you really look at it there's like a percentage of your pay always left over yeah after you pay and everything yeah. but it's a percentage of a bigger number now yeah so that bigger number can still do stuff yeah anyway I'm just getting into a cynical old man conversation right now <laughs> about how all these young kids get paid so much um what I want to know is okay salon we know your goal is build a salon over time build a career in the hairdressing yeah what do you want to do if you create a world like obviously you said uh, you want to bring some more of your hair dressing into that, but like yeah. what do you think that that world's going to do for you and how are you going to manage it? I've never thought about it. <laughs> I guess just because I've been on social media for so long, yeah. it's not a part of my life that I want to stop. Yep. I enjoy it. Yeah. I don't, I don't put myself out there as much and because I don't really post my – personal life too much like for a while i did a few vlogs mm. but then was getting a little bit too close to home okay because i'd get like random people out and we'd be having a conversation they go oh you live in stonefields right i don't live there anymore <laughs> no one lives there anymore <laughs> but they'd be like oh you live in stonefields and i'm like yeah. i don't want you to know that yeah so i pulled back from that okay. and kind of like took it in a different direction yep. but now i'm like what direction do i take it in yeah I can't really whip my phone out in the salon yeah, because it's not my business. Yeah. It's like a lot of the clients that I do probably don't want to be on the internet. Yeah, I probably should sit down and have a conversation with my boss and say, hey, I would love to yeah. show that platform what I actually do as yeah. a living. Probably something I would – brainstorm a bit more why haven't you had that conversation with her just really focused on getting my apprenticeship yeah um getting the hours yeah working hard because like i'm not no nah. someone said to me i went to an event and it was another influencer and they said to me for an influencer you're not very influency yeah. and i was like what does that mean and they said oh you know like we're at this event we're supposed to be posting content Everyone has their phone out. Yeah. You haven't really had your phone out. And I thought about it and it's because I don't really have my phone out very often. Yep. I love if I'm at the beach to whip out a phone and take a photo. Yeah. And like if I'm at a concert, I'll whip my phone out and take a video. Yeah. But for someone that's been on social media for as long as I have, I don't think personally my screen time is yeah. as much. Yeah. And I'm not as active yep. on platforms. I still take the content that I need to take. Yeah. But I take it quality over quantity, yeah. I guess. Do you not consume a lot? Like sit and scroll? Yeah. Oh, no, I sit and scroll all the oh, time. Oh, you sit and scroll. Oh, yeah. You just don't put a lot. You're just not constantly yeah. putting up stuff yourself. Like end of the day, I've had shower, yeah. had dinner. I'll I'll sit in bed and I'll yeah. scroll on yeah. TikTok. Yeah. I mean, you're 23, 20, yeah. 24. Love yeah. a good TikTok scroll. I mean, I say that, but I'm 36 and I do the same. Yeah. Um. Okay. So... You're not with your boss. Yeah. Does she, has she figured out what, like what it is that you have? Does she know? Yeah. Yeah. She, she has. So yeah. you've had that conversation. She realizes. Like she follows reach. me. Yeah. She got me to make her an account so that she could follow me. Okay. Cool. When I did my yeah. um, trip to America last year. Yeah. She wanted to see it because obviously I was away from work for a month. Got it. And like she'll like my stories every yeah. now and then. How old is she? Roughly. Yeah. Oh, yes, I have yes. no idea. No. No But idea. a bit older than you. Yeah. Yeah. Is she? Her kids are older than me. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So she's hitting Gen X boomer age bracket probably. I think so, and She's yeah. got a kid older than you probably. Yeah. Um. Okay. So what you would be okay with like using, if she was okay with it, you'd want to make TikToks about the salon and being able to start showing that side of the world. Do you actually okay with that? With people knowing then, oh, I work at this brand, like the salon and. Um. 
Because a lot of people aren't. Yeah, yes and no. Yeah. Like a lot of our clients' younger kids mm. will come in and go, oh, my God, that's like everything now. Uh, yeah. And then the parents will say to me at their next appointment, how does my daughter know who you are? Yeah, yeah. And then that conversation comes up. I think having 88,000 people know yeah. where I work. Yeah. I don't know, because I guess yeah. that would also, looking at a business point of view, bring in clients. Mm -hmm. But I think I'd have to be fully qualified and yeah. under my own, not in a, in the, under anyone's wing no. to be able to do it. Yeah. Because the clientele base at the moment is probably not wanting to be okay. on the internet. Yeah. It's a lot of maintenance clients. Yeah. Okay, a lot of maintenance clients. They don't Are really, they a bit older yeah. clientele? Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love them. Yeah. It's so oh. great. Yeah, yeah, I mean, if they just don't understand it, they yeah. don't know why they're being on it, right? Yeah. Um, I've always thought about renting a chair. Oh, yeah. From someone else and a different one or from your current boss? Um, Probably at a different space. Yeah. Later on, though. Yeah, yeah. Definitely later on. Renting I just walked past um, a creative space a few months ago. Yeah. It's, I think it's just off K Road. Okay. Looks epic. Yeah, yeah. But what, it's just obviously, hairdressing? yeah, it's okay. like a building upstairs. They've got a table for beauty therapy. They've got, got hairdressers. They've got yeah. tables for nails. Yeah. And you just rent a chair from it. Yeah. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So that you can then make content, hairdressing content. Yeah. Because it's yours. Like if I did seriously want to continue that yeah. side of things. I, um, it, I find that real interesting about like not letting people know where you are and whatnot I, I think it's right i think especially in your home life mm. for sure there's a weird thing when it becomes a business that people um like treat it differently mm. because you know like you're not the only one there if yeah. it was like a solo place it was just you oh yeah i probably wouldn't maybe then say that yeah because that's different right there's no like because people are weird on the internet um, they do weird stuff but once soon as they like if you were to promote say your current boss's one mm. I don't think you'd have any concerns of people doing anything weird because it's, mm. yeah, you might get an occasional person rock by, but like hardly ever. Like we, the worst we get was like last week when a guy brought a CV into us, mm. you know, and then he did this big gag where he had this like giant CV that he bought us. But like we get, it's, I was just going to say, we get it's none. Like really opposite to us. Yeah. We put our, it's, it's on Google, it's everywhere. Yeah. We Nothing. We don't get anything in the mail. We get nothing. I think it's just because people are like, oh, it's a business. Yeah. As opposed to a person. Yeah. You know, like, and they're like, we wouldn't go and do anything weird to the um, people. And even when I like, so I live next door to the place and um, Lisa Perez like came in and she was like, I'm so I surprised. Love her, by the way. She's oh the my best. God, I love her. Well, she goes, how do you, like, how are you so confident telling everyone you live across the road from your thing? And I was like, oh, I mean, there's. I've just never felt, you know, and, and then I, and then we had a conversation, like, I wonder if it's a gender thing. Like, I yeah. wonder if it's just because as a man, like there's le like, cause men are the weird ones. Like, you know what I mean? Like men are the, men are the weird ones. You said it, not me. Yeah. Well, they are. Let's be honest. Like <laughs> men on the internet are weird. Um, more weird. I say, I say there's like probably a high percentage of weirdos who are male than female when they're going to do in person crazy shit. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure if that's like a legitimate thing. I, it's definitely is right. Guys are weird. Um, Especially like younger they Young are, guys, the dumber they yeah. are. Yeah. So, and then that's what our conversation with Lisa was like, is it just because I don't, like as a as a man, I've like not had that fear, mm. you know? Like I've never had like, I mean, if men have a bunch of girls chasing them around, like they're not that worried about it. They're yeah. kind of like, oh, this is like, life's good. <laughs> like I'm, I'm doing something great, right? Whereas like a girl having a bunch of guys chasing around is like, fucking scary as shit yeah you're like oh my god what do they want yeah yeah so i wonder if that's i wonder if it's that then the business like i wonder if it's yeah or if it's a combination of the two when it when and if or if and when i own my own yeah. salon it's going to be blasted all yeah, over tiktok because that is a really good tool to use yep. in this day and age yep. to grow a business i think it's just because it's not my salon yeah it's not my business it's yeah. my job yeah. to work for my boss yeah and learn from my boss yeah so maybe in the future definitely yeah but just right now i'm pretty happy with how things are going that's good it's the last like six months no nope, not last six months the last like four months 
has probably been the happiest I've been, the most cool. at peace I've been nice. with how things are going in my life. What's caused that? Um, mm, just things in order. Just things. That. You don't have to say anything you don't want to, but it's just things just working. Yeah. yeah. Like I'm, I've got a plan for the year. Cool. Um, I moved out in August. Cool. I've got my girls. I've got my flatmates. Yeah. 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 So it's going to be a good year. Yeah. Okay. Well, what can we expect from you then? Finishing my apprenticeship. Yeah. Hopefully. So that's all you focus on all the way yeah, to August. I just really Nothing want to else finish matters. It. Finish apprenticeship. Yeah. Because I would have loved to have gone traveling again this year. Yeah. But I can't go traveling until I finish that apprenticeship. Of course. Yeah. I just want to have something under my belt because obviously I didn't finish my degree. Yeah. Which sometimes I really regret because I don't, I feel like I don't have something secure to fall back on. Yeah. yeah even yeah. though I know that I do want to be a hairdresser. Yeah. Um, just really enjoying my year this year. Yep. My motto of the year is unironically YOLO. <laughs> I love it. So, 20, so 23 of you. In a, yeah. a non-cringe, <laughs> disgusting way, YOLO. Yeah. yeah. Like just go out and do it. Yeah. And yeah, it's spend more time being happy as opposed to being Oh my God, I've got to do this, 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 and this. Just okay. roll with the punches. Cool. Love it. It's a good year. I don't know about anyone else in this room, but like my 23 to 25 year old years, like, were, yeah. were some of the best. Like, they were, I was an idiot. I was with this guy over here it's stuck in the Gold Coast. <laughs> um, but it was fun. Like, yeah. it was because it, it's that age bracket where, like, you're now a little older that people take you a little bit more seriously. Like yeah. You're not, you're not, you're not in the uni years, but you're not so old that, like, fuck, do I have to have my shit together? Yeah. Like once you get over 25, people are like, hey, you're starting to be an idiot. That's a weird stage that I'm kind of in. Yeah. So I'm like, I've had my fun. Yeah. I think, embarrassingly enough, we were talking about it the other day, 2022 and 2023, mm -hmm. I genuinely don't think I had one weekend off. It nice. was just go, go, go every weekend. Yeah. We just went out and had so much fun. And I've kind of gotten to a point now where I'm like, I actually can't be bothered. Like I seriously cannot be bothered. I've got my good friends. Yep. I've got a new boyfriend. We just want to work hard this year. This year is a grind year. Cool. Nice. Just not go out so much. Yeah. Spend more time yeah. saving. Um, it's, the, I mean, it comes for everyone at different times mm. like when that happens. And, you, and look, honestly, for most people, a relationship is most of the reason. Yeah. Because let's be honest, like when you're young and you're dumb and you're having a whole bunch of fun, like it's a it's that's what you do. And then yeah. you find a relationship and then that relationship starts to change the way you view life because you're like, I don't need to be out partying all the time because I'd no. rather hang out with you or yeah. whatever it might be. But I like what you're saying that like, then how do you achieve big goals? Yeah. Like what are the big things? I just want to ask one question before we start to wrap this conversation up, which... I haven't got a clear enough answer on, and I don't know if I'm if I'm going to get it. But like, so first of all, are you hoping to, like, with your boss or not your boss? Who knows? We don't know what the conversation is. This isn't anything to do with your boss, but is it to just go from finishing apprenticeship to just being a full time hairdresser? That's the very next step. Or is it like see if there's other opportunities that you can find from that? And that's not about like mm. quitting or anything like that. That's like, so does your boss think or is hoping that like you go from apprentice to full time full -time stylist? Yeah. yeah. That's her goal. Is yeah. that role and title, forget where you are, the role and title, what you want to, like, is that where you want to go to? Or do you want to go off and do some other cool shit eventually? Yeah. Yeah. And is Definitely. that like, what does that look like? Like, let's not, because like, time frame's going to be time frame. So it's yeah. not about like when you're going to quit and you're going to, the opportunities have to come when they come. What are those cool things that you want to go do? I want to travel. I love traveling. Yeah. Um, 2025, so I guess also this year, what I was saying before, I've changed my mindset more from having a lot of fun mm. to moving into the more saving side of things. Yeah. Save this year so that I can travel and do whatever. It's just a case of also when I finish my apprenticeship, do I want to take that overseas mm. with me mm. or do I want to do something else? Yeah. Not a complete career change. Like there's obviously 
I really want to own my own salon. And I'll always come back to that. Yeah. But I've kind of got this 2024, 2025 year where I'm like, I'm not quite old enough in my own mind and in my own self where I feel like I desperately need to have a salon yeah. or a house or, yeah. you know, I still have like a little bit of leeway to sure. do whatever I want. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe. What, what is the trouble? Keep working. I want to do Europe, okay. like every man and the dog. And when you say travel, is it like the classic um, just big overseas experience for a few months and go do it or you want to go live and work or like what does it look like for you? Um, I don't know if I would ever want to live. Mm. Actually, I don't know. A lot of like my entire friend group has moved. Yeah. And I'm the youngest in my friend group. So at the time I was like – they've been waiting a really long time to do this yeah. and I never felt ready. And I still don't think I feel ready to move overseas and do that. Yeah. It's like, I love New Zealand yeah, yeah. and I don't want to be away from my mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really close with my parents. Yeah. Like I moving out last year was big for me Yeah, and I love it and it's been so good, but I've just never really felt the urge to move overseas and work. Yeah. yeah. I don't I know if that's still coming, Yeah, but I almost feel like, Oh, everyone else is doing it, so should I be doing that? Or am I just happy here and am yeah. I okay being happy here? Yeah. Maybe. It's one of those things with travel and like for people who are listening who have done a lot of it, you don't really – you often don't know you want to go live abroad or do something abroad mm. until you go properly travel. Yeah. And then you catch a bug, as everyone says, and then – and then you'll go like let's say you went to Europe and you did three months in Europe and you had this life changing experience right because it, it, it will be like that to yeah. like go see all this then you come back and there's this like dread when you come back because mm. you've changed so much as a person but no one else has yeah. everyone else has stayed the same and you and they're like they don't get where you're at they don't understand so now you feel out of place at home because mm. you're you've changed but the world hasn't yeah and so the only place you know where everyone else is feeling the same way you is is abroad yeah. again. And then so you go. And it happened to Joni when we took her to New York last year. Yeah. So, like, Joni's, like, I mean, her family are super tight. Both yeah. sides. Like, her and her husband's family, both sides of them, like, they just don't leave South Auckland. Like, yeah. they stay there. They live there their whole lives. They do the whole thing. Then they made – her and Alistair made a big deal of, like, moving to the city. Yeah. Away from the family. So, that was already huge. And then yeah. she came to New York for me for three to ten weeks or whatever. And she was, like, I'm not going home. Like you can't let me go home. Yeah. But I have to come back to New York. And that, like, even everyone here, right, like, saw the changes in Joni. Like, she was, like, a whole new person. Mm. And so I think – and, like, that doesn't always happen to everyone, but I think that what you'll find probably is go to Europe. Yeah. You'll do this big thing. You and your partner will be like, holy shit, if, you, if, if, you, know, if you guys go over there together, mm. that, shit, how do we come back? Yeah. Like, how do we come back? Because – if you really do like traveling, like there's a thing that just happens yeah. and you're like, holy shit, the possibilities in the world. And as a creator, what you'll find is that, ah, oh, there is no money in New Zealand for creators, yeah. but there is globally. You know, like we got a young kid in uh, New York who works for us. He's 19. He's got a pretty big following. He's like 840,000 or something dollars yeah. on TikTok. But he pulls in 4,000 US a month just from TikTok. Wow. Just from the, like from the creator fund? Yeah. That's his pay. You see, we don't have the creator nah. fund here. But you can right. hack it. Yeah. So like I've got it because I was in there for three months and I kept the VPN on when I got back until right. it ticked over and then I've got it. And we're going to do the same for Janie. So you can hack it into it. You just still need a bank account and stuff over there, which yeah. there's some – you can get a Wise account. There's an American yeah. bank account. But anyway, to my point is I think – um that will be interesting to see in a year from now yeah. where your headspace is. Like you go travel and then you just like, I don't want to come back. Yeah, because I was in America for a month, <laughs> yeah. beginning of last year. Yeah, Mike did LA, New York, Washington, yeah. North Carolina, Florida, did Coachella. Yeah, Got to the end of that holiday and I was like, please don't make me get on that plane. <laughs> I don't want to go home. Yeah. And that kind of is what opened my eyes to it. But then like I went to Sydney end of last year. Yeah. And I was on my own for four days. Yeah. Never been to the city before. Yeah. It was kind of just like a bigger Auckland. And I was like, I do want to go home. Like I miss my family. Yeah. So it was like I went to America on the other side of the world and I didn't want to leave. But I went to our neighbors and I was like, oh, I'm ready to go home now. Yeah. 
Yeah. Sydney's not like going to, Austra- going to Australia as a Kiwi is not that exciting. Everyone's moving. So many I think, people. I, I think it's, um, it's an ease. Yeah. It's ease. It's accessible. Yeah. There's more money in Australia. Population's bigger. There's more opportunities. Yeah. So all those things. It's just New Zealand with more opportunities. And I went there for 12 years on and off. Yeah. Um, I love Australia. Like Claire's from Australia. Australia is amazing, but it's not, you don't, you're not different. Yeah. You don't change. It's not a travel bug. Like it's not like when I went to New York or Tokyo or London to live. It's more of a lifestyle change, I guess. Yeah. Just a little bit of lifestyle. Yeah. Same thing. So same problems. Yeah. It's all the same stuff. Uh, but it's just more opportunities. Yeah. Okay. So there's a bit of, um, traveling. There's a bit of not sure where salon's going to go, but you're going to open your own one someday one soon. Day. Okay. Cool. If anyone has any name suggestions, <laughs> let me know. Oh. Got lids, lids at the moment. It's not great. Lids, lids. As in like Lydia's fixing lids of people. Mm. Is that the idea? Oh, that is great. I would never name it that. That though. is it. Nah, it just people. Popped. Can we just clip this bit out and just say, if this gets a thousand comments, <laughs> it has to be lids, lids. <laughs> this is it. The internet will destroy you if you don't. I know. <laughs> Oh. No, nah, that's great. Now, thank you so much for coming on and sharing your story. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having I'll me. I'll see you next time. It was fun. Thanks.